springs and summers. Uh, it's elevated the guys at the top of the depth chart. Uh, the guys at the bottom of the depth chart, the youngest guys are coming along. So everyone's making everyone better just through through competition like, like it is at all the positions. We've heard Ty Isaac have slimmed down and is looking better. Can you talk about him a little bit? Yeah, he's just doing everything right. Uh, run the ball well. Uh, been great in protection. Uh, he's had reliable hands, taking care of the ball. Uh, he is a little bit trimmer, so he, he's moving a little bit more swiftly. So we're really excited about him. Jay, we've, we've heard a lot about uh, Chris Evans has specifically mentioned the big back, small back aspect. He said Tyrone kind of looked at it through the lens of a big back, as whereas you are kind of more geared toward, toward a small running back. Can you detail that a little bit, explain it? Uh, I don't know if I could explain the difference or anything because I don't, I, don't, I don't know that I'd agree that I see things like a small back or anything. Um, I just try to look at each guy and what they bring to the table and what their skill set is and, and uh, uh, you have to understand that they're all different. So whether or not that's different than before, I, I really couldn't tell you. But uh, we do have a good group of guys that's, that they all bring a little something different to the table. So um, just when you're calling plays and substituting, that's something that you keep in mind. Chris, Chris said last week that um, you know a year ago he was either run the ball or release. Now he has to actually block people also. Yeah. How have you seen that aspect of his game developing? Uh, he's gotten so much more comfortable. Just trusting his eyes and, and reading defenses and knowing his responsibility. But then on top of that, knowing what the offensive line is doing, what the quarterback's thinking, uh, just in terms of where the protection is going and where our weaknesses are. So uh, he's shown a ton of growth in that regard. And, and uh, uh, he's been just very, very trustworthy to have in there in, in all kinds of different protections. What's the most difficult part of, uh, uh, of trying to figure out how to divvy up these you know, snaps that these guys are going to be? I mean, you've got four or five, six capable backs back there. How do you divvy that up? Uh, we'll see. <laughs> that simple? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of, they, they just work themselves out? Uh, in, in, in terms of the rotation question that I'm sure you're, you're, you're getting at, I mean, we have a lot of capable guys and they all bring something different to the table, like I said, and, and uh, uh, not every run or every pass concept is best for, for all of them. So uh, there's going to be a little bit of... Uh, uh, specialization, but in terms of how it actually works out, um, you guys will you'll find out when, when everyone else does. <laughs> for you, you're seven months into the job now, coaching running backs. Has it been on the job training for you, or do you think you've adapted pretty quickly to this? Uh, I hope I've adapted quickly. Uh, I mean, the, the group's responded well to, to what we've asked them to do, and, and uh, I've had a lot of fun working with them. They're, they're such good kids, uh, and they work so hard that it makes your job as a coach really easy because they want to be great. Uh, and they, they're always looking for more and looking for a way to do better. So as a coach, uh, that makes your job much easier. Has what your you? confidence grown as you've taken on this role? Um, no. no. I mean, it's always I, been high, it's always <laughs> been low. No. I, I mean, I've, I've, I've felt uh, uh, confident in, in what I've done before and I still do now. So uh, I've had a lot of fun, though. What are your early impressions of uh, Omori Samuels and Kurt Taylor? They're doing great. They're doing really well. Uh, it's funny. you. you, you move into college football and everyone's bigger, everyone's faster. Uh, the, the, the game's a little bit different. And, and they came from two different sides of the country, two different styles of football. Uh, but you've seen both of them in, in recent practices come into their own and start running with more purpose, uh, more decisive, a little bit more uh, aggressive. And, and uh, they've done some great things. Given the experience you have at fullback, it was a little bit surprising to hear your dad talking up Ben Mason quite so much. How has he been doing? Been and doing do, you think, do you think he could contribute? Certainly. Yeah, he, he certainly will contribute. Uh, he's, it was like he was born to play the, the position. He loves smashing people. And uh, he has great hands. He's, he runs really well, uh, which, which people probably wouldn't realize. He's, a, he's an excellent athlete, and he's just got the demeanor for it. Um, mentally, he's taken on the responsibilities really well, and, and uh, he'll certainly contribute for us. Jay, John, John O'Corn was saying that Karan had a burst like nobody's ever seen. Where, where are the, I guess, biggest improvements with Karan that you've noticed just through camp since last year? Uh, shoot, man, just, just everything. The, the biggest thing would probably be protection. Uh, he's been really, really reliable, and, and uh, uh, we have some, some very aggressive, physically capable linebackers, and he's done a great job picking up blitzes and, and uh, putting his face in there because he's not the biggest guy, but he's very, very willing. Uh, he has natural leverage and, and can play with uh, some violence. So that's probably the biggest thing because he's always been able, able to carry the ball, but now he's doing it with a little bit more uh, strength and power too. So he's, uh, he's doing great. What have you seen from Kareem? Uh, again, just improved in every regard. Uh, he's, he's strung together 
many, many practices in a row. He's healthy. He has a better grasp of the playbook. Uh, he's running um, like a, the physical presence that, that we need him to be because he has a bigger back and he can come downhill with some force. Uh, so all in all, he's, he's really had a, a tremendous fall. Who's made the biggest jump in the spring? That's a good question. Uh, I don't know. I'll get back to you on that. They've, they've, all, they've all done, they've all improved at the things we've asked, asked them to improve on. Uh, so I'd have a hard time saying any one person. Jay, with Kareem, what, what were some of the things he needs to do to get over, you know, freshman hump, whatever it is, to be able to maybe contribute and help you guys out this year? Uh, stay on the field, just in terms of, of not getting nicked up and being able to practice and, and avoid injury. That's a big thing, because uh, then, then you start building that trust and confidence. Uh, so, so that's huge. Uh, he has a tremendous grasp of the playbook um, now because he's been on the field more. So that affects that the mental aspect quite a bit. But um, yeah, I would say those things. He was a physical guy in high school. Is he a guy you, you see as somebody who can drop the shoulder and do some different things? I mean, what what kind of back can he be? Uh, he can be a decisive downhill back uh, that can come downhill with some force. Uh, he's a little bit different than the other guys. He doesn't have quite as much elusiveness. Uh, but when he sees a hole, he can put his foot in the ground and, and really hit it with some, some violence. So that in itself uh, is almost a form of elusiveness because uh, he, is, he is a very decisive runner. Jay, what has it been like with, with Greg so far? Kind of uh, Greg Fry delegating responsibility with the run game and everything. What's that relationship been like? It's been awesome. Greg's a, a, a great dude, and, and uh, he's fun to be around, and he has so much experience with a lot of the, the perimeter runs and zone runs. Uh, that, that came from Indiana and other places he's been. So um, he's, he gives us great balance in terms of scheme and philosophy. And, and then uh, uh, his work with the tackles and tight ends is, has helped us quite a bit. Do you feel like, I mean, because you were a tight ends coach previous to this, I mean, do you, do you feel like you guys are, you know, good combo, some of his strengths or maybe, you know what I mean? He has strengths, you have strengths, that kind of, what's the balance like? Um, I don't know if it's any different than a normal, Staff would be, uh, I enjoy being around him and enjoy watching him coach and, and uh, learning things from him. And, and uh, so it's, we work really well together, if, if that's what you're, what you're asking. Well, I mean, just in terms of, of personnel, I mean, with the run game coordinator, with you, guys, with you having tight end experience, he has tight end experience. Are you guys both kind of talking about tight ends at the same time, or are you strictly just run, running back run game? No, I mean, he, he coaches the tight ends, and uh, uh, yeah, I, I kind of stay with the backs. and. It's kind of like a like a like a band. Like you don't, if you're the bass player, you don't just go hop on the drums right. just because you feel like it. Because you used to play drums, you know. It's 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 kind of a uh, you got to stick to your, your instruments, and and uh, uh, I think you, you can create some pretty good music that way. For you, what's been the best part of coaching the running backs so far, and the most challenging part of that? Uh, the best part's just the group. Uh, they all come in every day, um, especially this time of year where it's a physical grind. It's very mentally demanding. Um, they come in and they're, they're excited to be there. They're uh, unselfish uh, within a selfish position, position, if that makes sense, where, where everyone wants carries, everyone wants to be the guy, the big man on campus. Uh, but they all root for each other's success. They, they, uh, they help each other. Um, they, they learn from each other. So that's, that's been the coolest thing and the thing that's been the most fun. Uh, in terms of the most challenging, I mean, sometimes it's, it's uh, you have a bunch of guys who can all run, run a certain play really well, and it's who do you put in. Uh, I'm really fortunate to have a great group, so uh, that's a definitely a good problem to have. Pass pro as a whole, are you pretty pleased with what you've seen this fall? Yeah, very pleased. That, that, besides taking care of the football, that's the, the most important thing. Those are one and two in terms of our priorities and, and what we talk about in the spring, summer, and fall. And uh, overall, that's, that's uh, something that we've been really pleased with, and, and it's got to carry over to the fall. Who has stood out in pass pro? Um, they've all been, been uh, pretty reliable. Um, I would say Ty, because he's the most improved, um, just in terms of being able to, to use his size to his advantage. He's a very big back, so uh, being able to shoot his hands and be a physical presence on, on linebackers, on interior rushes, that's been a big thing. Uh, but Chris is, Chris is the same way. I mean, he's so improved. So uh, the great thing is we're in a position where we have – uh, four or five backs that we feel totally comfortable being in on third down. And, and that's a situation where in most teams, it's just one guy, maybe two, that you would trust enough. So I think that gives us a huge advantage. How much are you doing with special teams now? Are you still working with special teams? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Chris and I work together and, yeah. and uh, uh, with all the special teams. What do you 
seeing from your return guys? Do you have any guys that are you're working? Can you tell us who's working back there? Uh, it would be a list of like 15 guys. Well, it's okay. We can uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they're all they're all good. They're they're working through. Uh, they don't have a ton of experience catching the ball, so so. Uh, um, Getting the level of trust that you need to have a guy back there is, is the most important thing. And, and uh, the guys back there, uh, almost all the running backs have, have been back there returning kicks and some of them returning punts. Uh, the receivers, Eddie, Kekoa, mm -hmm. uh, Tariq, Donovan, uh, and then some of the young DBs with David Long and, and uh, Ambry. So it's, uh, uh, and uh, guys like Kalik even uh, have, been, have been back there. So it's a, it's a good group. And, and you're just trying to find the guy that you feel comfortable uh, in front of 100,000 people, being back there catching the ball and and, uh, and uh, taking care of it. Is this the narrowing it down week? Because you only got a week left till game week. Mm -hmm. Certainly, you're, I mean, you're trying to figure out any of those tight battles, figure out who 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 you're going to trust to put in the game in these situations, and and uh, um, you know, it is it is game week, and there's that sense of urgency, but also you have to make the right decision and and. Uh, uh, some of these battles, you can let them play out for a few more days before you before you pull the trigger. And if it's really tight, that's a good thing because it means you got uh, more than one guy that's that's pretty capable. Got time for one more. You being a younger coach, are there, mm -hmm. are there any mentors or other coaches? Obviously, your dad is a good resource that you've reached out to in the process of coaching or making the transition from tight ends coach to running backs coach. Oh, a bunch. Uh, Thomas Hammock with the with the Ravens, who coached at Wisconsin. I coached running backs over there. Uh, he was he's a very close close friend and, and a really helpful resource. Uh, Shane Day with the the Dolphins who coaches tight ends, but he's coached running backs before. Um, a bunch of other of uh, other high school, college, pro coaches. Um, it's a, it's a long list. I I tend to just talk to anybody I can about anything. Uh, you never know when you're going to find something helpful. So, but those those couple guys really stand out. Thanks, Jay. Thanks, 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 Go that way. For what? so good about writing up for you, Hello, everybody. Hi, Mike. How are you? Good. How are you? How those young corners coming around? Not fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> How's that? Steve. Yeah. Not, not fast enough. Um, they, they show flashes. I'll say this, and, and, and I don't want to, Levert has, uh, since his injury, he's been pretty consistent. And uh, you can see him increasing every day, getting better. The other guys, they're showing flashes. They just need to, to grab it. You know, somebody got to grab it and run with it and, and, and take it. And it's just, it's just not happening. And hopefully somebody will the next five, seven days, and we got to get ready for a game in less than two weeks. So, so Levert's responded to whatever challenge you guys He has. He there. absolutely has. You know, he, he, he came back. He didn't practice much in the spring. We were very disappointed about that, and we expressed that with him. And, and uh, you know, this summer, uh, he really worked hard, and then, unfortunately, he gets injured. And, and, and the, But he came back and just picked up and has been going. Arrow's going up. Arrow's going up. Uh, can't say that about the rest of the guys. Again, you see some flashes, you know they can do it, but they got to do it every single play. How that, often have you gotten to a point in camp uh, where you feel like that and in other years have seen a group, a secondary, come along and, and do what you want? Well, you, you know, I, I'll go back to back when I was in Philadelphia coaching with the Eagles. You know, my first year, the second year there, you, you know, we had some new faces that, that came together and played well. You know, and certainly we've got new faces, I guess I could say young faces, uh, and they're not coming together. Uh, and I don't know if they're just afraid to make plays. Uh, again, because they have the ability and they've shown the ability, they've done it. They've done it in, in live situations out here. It's just, it's just for them to understand it has to be a, on a consistent basis, and, and that is just not happening right now. Is that just a matter of experience, do you think? Uh, possibly, it could be. It could be experience. Um, it, 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 it may be. It may just be just they don't understand how to dig a little deeper and to find it, you know, and then maybe that could be part of the problem too. So. Is anyone closer? Do you feel like someone's making more flashes than someone else? No. 
<laughs> Are you sure this isn't coach speak? No. <laughs> no, this, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to tell a story that isn't true. <laughs> Is that fair enough? It's fair. <laughs> okay. We appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we, we got a game to play in, in like, what, 12 days? So we got to, yeah. they're working hard. They just, they just got to work hard more consistently and do the right things more consistently. Of the guys <coughs> back there, you see Tyree Kennel quite a bit. What, what do you see out of here? Uh, I like Tyree. Tyree's, he's the older guy of the group. Um, he's pretty consistent. You know, Tyree's a consistent player. And, you know, we're looking for big, big things from him this year. You know, he's the guy that helps get people lined up, and he's the quarterback of the defense back there. In what ways does he help the corners specifically? Well, just the communication. You know, motions, all the man we play, uh, you know, all the motions and movement we get. He's, we have certain calls, certain, certain uh, bunchings or stacks. So, and to get all those calls out, that's one of the guys we count on. Like a situation where you're playing like three or four corners in that first game or more. Just yeah, you know, we, you know, Coach Brown, he has he has a lot of packages. Yeah. So there's going there's going to be a lot of DBs on the field, safeties and and corners at the same time. Is that going to be a learning experience too for you that first game, just to see what these young guys? Well, that's going to be a still. great indicator of where we are as a secondary and certainly as a team. You know, it, it's gonna it's a big game for us, and, and it's one uh, you know we need to win. Ben St. Just, how's he coming along? He's doing well. He's doing well. He's just, uh, again, shows flashes of, of doing some really good things, and then, you know, just not consistent doing it. But he'll be fine. Really good athlete. Really good athlete. Harbaugh mentioned Ambry Thomas as a guy that very likely could see the field early this year. What have you seen out of him so far? Yeah, definitely. He, Ambry is, he's a want to guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the guy got energy, he's got juice. Um, his inexperience is what's what's holding him back now. I think he's thinking too much. You know, he, he wants to do the right thing so bad that, that he overthinks things. I mean, he just got to relax and, and just go play the game and, and trust the technique that we teach and then just go play. But he, he, is, he is a bright spot. How right. challenging are the young wide receivers for your young DBs? Oh, uh, extremely, extremely. You know, uh, Donovan, uh, People Jones has is, is improved so much in the last two weeks. Tyreek Black has improved big time in the last couple of weeks. Kekoa Crawford, uh, really, it, it's, it, it's great for us. And, and I love what our offense is doing now in the, in the preseason for us because they're giving us so many looks. It's going to help us in the long run. But, but they've been doing very well, the, the big receivers. Is there sure. any one or two things holding you know, David Long, a guy like that, back from being in that mix with him right there? Right. See, I don't know. And that's probably a question you have to ask David Long. I mean, because it's out there. Just go grab it, take it, you know, and, and it's there. It's there for the taking, and, and that's what we're trying to find out. Why is David Long not running, running with it? Mm -hmm. So we'll figure it out. Does that seeking of consistency maybe help help a Brandon Watson and Keith Washington who have a little bit more experience? Well, uh, B. Watt is he's he's the oldest of the group, you know, back there, and he's he's played and he's played well. You know, uh, but for whatever reason, he hasn't taken the bull by the horns, so to speak, and just take off with it. You know, the, the really, being the oldest guy back there, that's what I would think. I would want, you know, hey, I should be in charge back here. I'm going to go take this thing and let's go. But that's not happening. Because your own playing experience and your coaching experience in the NFL, do you have to change your – maybe expectations for these players at this level, or is that something you, you don't allow yourself to do? No, I, I, and I've told them, I'm demanding of myself, you better be demanding of yourself. If you want to be great and play at this place, at the University of Michigan, you know, just take a step back and look around. Look at all the great players that have been here. I mean, do, you, do you want to be a part of that, or do you want to just be a flash in the pan? I was, hey, it's, it's, it's up to them how they, how they want to figure it out. I'm just trying to give them the tools to make them a better football player. Mike, is Keith still working in just a corner? You guys moving him around? Where he's uh, he's uh, been corner, playing corner mostly, you know, but in, in other packages you could see him in, in different spots. Which of your corners that stood out to you in run support? Uh, Levert, for sure. 
Uh, and you see B. Watt. B. Watt knows how to how to do that. The, the younger guys have to learn the technique, but uh, definitely B. Watt and Burke for sure. What's your concern level right now? I mean, you sound like you're really concerned about where they're going. With I, I'm not. You know, I'm not concerned. I I have, I have confidence in myself. I have confidence in in in, in those guys. I I don't want to sound like you know the sky is falling or well, there is any cliffs there is isn't, there isn't any cliffs which could be a good thing right it could change right. some some moxie going around right but uh no i i i, I just for, because i see it in them that i think that's the more frustrating thing mm -hmm. for me it, i see it it's there you know just do it on a consistent basis and then we'll be okay but is it concerning that not that not one of them is really doing it yet, or is it you well, feel like someone's going to finally jump out and do that's, it? That's that's what we think. That's what I think is going to happen. Somebody just hopefully somebody will read this article. I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I mean, but these are the things I convey to them every every day, and and I don't again. I don't want to sound the alarm. We're just trying to get these guys to move along because you know you hear the youth thing. Well, you know. That's no longer an excuse. You've had a spring, and now you are freaking two weeks away from a big game. It's, it's time to go. Mm -hmm. So I am very confident that within the next week, one or two of those guys are going to step up. How do you like the rest of the defense from what you've seen? Oh, I dig it, man. It's a fun defense. You know, Coach Brown, very aggressive, and that's who we are. Love it. Love the man. Love the trap concepts of it. I, it it's a fun defense. It's one that you know I would love to play. Are they like meeting the hype, the defensive line, the linebackers? They're getting there, man. Yeah, absolutely. They're getting there as well. They're they're on their way. Got time for a couple more for Coach Zordich. Mike, was would you voicing the concern like this a little bit about secondary? Is it I, I, do the linebackers and defensive line do, are they in a position where they feel like maybe they have to overcompensate? No, 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 not at all, not at all. We are in we are in the third week of training camp, you know, so there's no panic. No, no panic, and nobody else has to compensate for anybody else. If everybody just does their own job, we'll win a lot of games. No panic. Jalen Kelly Powell working with your group at all? Yeah, he is. He's been working uh, with the safeties, the corners. He's been kind of all over. A little Viper, nickel. Uh, great addition to the defense. What do you like about him as a corner? His cover ability. You know, coach calls him a little nap. Man. He just psh, always around guys covering them, and, and that's a positive thing, especially when you play a lot of man. Yeah. Brad really Hawkins. good addition. And Brad Hawkins plays. Brad, I tell you, Brad is going to be a really good football player here. He, he's got some talent, very talented. He's just behind a little bit because he wasn't here in the spring. So he's got a, some catching up to do as far as the learning curve goes, but really talented kid. Like him. Playing safety? Yeah, he's really? in safety. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right, guys, thank you for the time. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. All right. <laughs> we'll see you guys. <laughs>